we've got another PoE hat. We have, yes. How many PoE hats is this now? I think this is the third one, isn't it? Yes. yes. So we had PoE, and then we had PoE Plus, and then we have this, this one. new thing, which is not called PoE Plus Plus. It's called PoE Plus, plus the Raspberry Pi 5. five. Yes, yeah, okay, because good. PoE Plus Plus is a, is a higher an, power standard. It's another thing. Okay, fine. Um, so this is a this is a to be clear. This is a PoE Plus. So the standard it implements is PoE Plus, which is the twenty five ish watt yes. standard, um, uh, and it's intended for use with Raspberry Pi five. Now, why did we need to do another PoE hat? Well, uh, Pi five. Uh, introduces a lot of new things and one of the things to make board space uh, in the right area was the PoE connector, the little four pin connector got moved to the other edge of the board. Um, this is as part of James's plan to, to, put the, um, to put the Ethernet jack in all possible positions on different <laughs> versions of Raspberry Pi. I can't uh, say if that's James's plan or not, but that appears to be the uh, starting point. So we've had almost not. all, we've had of the, of the sort of four combinations now of um, uh, uh, mag jack at the top and bottom and PoE three, connector at the top, top and bottom. bottom. We've had three. Three. We've had across three B plus four and five. We've had three of the four possible options. We have. Right. Um, so it's a simple. He's, he's a not going to go to the other edge of the board yet. So, so yeah. it's a simple mechanical reason. Yes. Which is that that four pin connector. What's the, what does the four pin connector do? Ah, oh, that uh, takes the um, volts from the PoE uh, from your Ethernet cable. Mm -hmm. So. It's around 48 volts and brings it out to those uh, pins there then for the PoE hat to take that and convert it to the 5 volts. Right. So uh, we, have, we, have a, we have a PoE capable mag jack. Yes. What does that mean? That's extra taps on the windings? Is that it? is indeed extra right. taps on the primary windings. So uh, this is non-isolated volts from direct from the cable mm -hmm. uh, through the um, transform. Well, not through the transformer. It's just a tap on the transformer. Mm -hmm. And then those four pins go up to the PoE hat, which then gives us um, the isolation required to generate then the five volts right. power so, 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 so it provides isolation, uh, it provides um, voltage conversion regulation, and it feeds five volts back into the GPIO connector the Indeed, top left, so, in the top yes. left corner. And there's one other thing it does is all the um, PoE negotiation as well. Right. So it will negotiate with the switch. Okay, so you have to advertise, so you have a PoE capable switch or a mid-span injector, and you have to advertise to that that you are PoE capable before it will give you the volts. Yes, uh, and then which, In theory, which power range you want as well. It's injector that just gives you some volts. Anyway, yes, so yeah. um, but you've very also have two power ranges, the 13 watt and the 25 watt power range. Right. So then the Pi can t detect which power range is available. How does that signaling work? Uh, um, on, the, on the Ethernet cable? Mm, yes. Uh, it does it by, um, first of all, it looks for the, uh, some capacitance on the cable mm -hmm. to know that there is something there. And then so it the switch, this is the switch. This is the switch, right. yes. Um, and then it applies a voltage um, to, the, to the cable and to uh, then try and see, detect a resistor of a particular value. Right. Um, and if it can detect that, then it knows which power range available. There are more advanced methods for the higher for PoE++ that we're referring to, but we don't do that, so right. no need to describe okay. how all that magic works. And there are, there are PoE modes where you put the power on the spare, the pairs that are spare in some standards, yes. and then there are, um, there are modes where you put it on the signal pairs, and you have to support both of those. Yes, right. yep. so there, that's why there are four pins, so right. e each pair ends up with a pin. Right. Um, and oh, because cool. of crossover cables, you end up with each pin could be positive or negative. Right. Um, officially, it should only be in pairs, but if things go wrong, it could right. be anywhere. Right. So there's a there's a very fancy bridge rectifier at the front. Mm. Uh, it's an active bridge we yeah, use. Yeah. So it's not just it's not just four diodes in a little circle there. Uh, like. Well, it would be eight diodes because yeah. you've got four yeah. wires coming in. Yes, indeed. So it would be eight diodes. Yeah. Um, and so we've got effectively. And what would diodes. be the problem with them being diodes, actual diodes? It's just power drop. Right. Um, and so you just, you know, a diode, because these, you've got to withstand at about 100 volts, worst case peak energy. Mm -hmm. um, if there is unplug events and things, overshoots and undershoots. Mm -hmm. uh, so the diodes have got to be quite chunky diodes. And so you end up with uh, 0.7 to 1 volt drop across each of the diodes, mm -hmm. and you've got two of those, and you're you're taking yeah, over half an amp, yeah. that's power. Right. Uh, and power is heat. Mm -hmm. And so what we have is an active bridge, 
which is made up of little FETs in there, and that then makes the, they have RDS on, mm -hmm. so that's I squared R losses mm -hmm. at that point, but the R... Um, but the RDS on is tiny. It's, it's tiny it's compared to... Milliohms. So, so we've dropped, you know, we, it becomes 90% efficient instead right. of uh, a lot less percent efficient. Cool. Okay, so that's, so, that's, um, so that's POE hats, what they do. Um, are there any other, so, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the evolution from uh, POE hat to POE plus hat to POE plus hat for Raspberry Pi 5. What were the technologies that were introduced in each of these? Because it's not just a, this isn't just a mechanical thing, right? Yeah. There's right. also some new technology in this design, and there was some new technology in in the POE plus hat originally. Yes. So what's kind of been introduced at each stage? So the first POE hat was only a 13 watt product, mm -hmm. um, and that had a um, much more conventional transformer. On there. Yeah, so when I think about transformers, I think about a sort of a, a kind of a ferrite, kind of a ferrite core with some windings, you know, some, some, so. some wire wrapped around it by a machine, then clamped together, um, and then some wires coming out. Yep, and you can see that on, on the original one, mm -hmm. um, and that was a, what's known as a flyback converter. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we moved on the next one, the POE Plus hat. Uh, we did two things: we changed to a forward converter because forward converters are typically more efficient when you want the top end of the power range. Uh, they're not and that's very much what PoE plus hat was engineered for, right? PoE yes. plus hat is engineered to give you another kind of double the, double the peak yes. power and to be most efficient at the top end of that range. Indeed so. So at the 20, at, at, at just below 25 watts, uh, well, the 20 to 20 odd watts range, um, it's much more efficient than a flight back converter mm -hmm. um, is. Uh, but we also changed the transformer technology. So we went from having a wire around the um, ferrite to using a PCB, um, which has turns in tracks on the uh, PCB with a ferrite clamped over it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a separate little board. And you can see that that gets soldered in. Mm. I remember the first time I saw one of those. I mean, it's such a beautiful little space age solid state bit of stuff, right? Yes. Um, you know, it really does look beautiful. So. Um, one, uh, the winding density is less because you've got to have the PCB substrate, but you get other advantages. Mm. Uh, so your uh, skin effect, of, which is a, a, an effect when you have high frequencies, virtually disappears under planar because you've got a lot of air, you've got a lot of surface area for your copper, mm -hmm. um, and you can just thicken up the copper on the PCB. So if you need, how many layers of PCB is that? Uh, I can't remember. It's, a it's lot, probably though, eight to right? ten yeah, layers yeah. PCB. Yeah. Um, and what we've done now for the latest one is taken that, instead of having a separate PCB, we've now got one PCB, which then has the ferrite clamped on. And so that one PCB has the 40 pin connector on it. It has the four pins power connector, and then also has the turns built into so the So we PCBs. built, rather than buying a transformer from somebody else, we've actually built our own transformer on our own PCB, and yes. we just put a ferrite around it. Um, and because of the various bits of optimizations we've been able to do, we've, we've gone back to a flyback converter, right? Um, but we've been able to keep uh, a very good power efficiency right. on there. Um, mm -hmm. And that's allowed us to reduce the board area of the amount of components on the board. So it's, a, it's now L-shaped. Yeah. So this thing is a, uh, I think there have been a lot of debates as to whether it's a compliant, uh, is it a compliant hat? Is, it, is, there, <laughs> is there a requirement that a hat has PCB in all of the places that that uh, that the hat can have a PCB, um, but yeah, so this thing is it's L shaped. Now, what does that let us? What does that let us do? Well, that now lets us. Um, previous POE hats had a fan on board, mm -hmm. and that wasn't for cooling the POE hat, right? No, that was for cooling the um, the SOC, right? The, uh, so it was a sort of kind of a bonus feature of the POE hat was it also had a thermal solution for the for the CPU. Yes, and so it was. Uh, so it had this big hole in the middle of the PCB. So there's a lot of wastage of the PCB um, because it just gets thrown away from the middle. We're already of the almost an L-shaped PCB. <laughs> yes, um, but we needed the area. Yeah. If, you, if you have a look at it, it's quite a dense uh, board. Um, but because we've been able to simplify some of the electronics um, now and integrate things more, um, especially around the area of the transformer, uh, we've got this L-shaped uh, thing. Uh, board and that then allows us to put it in the new um, Pi 5 case as well. Yeah, so which, which itself has a fan. And yeah. that has the fan, right. yes. Okay. And so there's been a lot of 3D work to make sure it all fits. It's all uh, very compact, 
but you can now have a case with a built-in fan and a PoE solution um, all nicely together. That's very neat. Good. And how much more, how much more efficient is it than the, the previous design? Is it more efficient than the PoE Plus design or is it...? It's more efficient at the lower, right. uh, at the lower power okay, levels. So we, so we have now have efficiency across the, across the power consumption range rather than concentrating that efficiency up at the top. Yes. So with Pi 5 being able to um, go more into sleep modes and things like that, yeah. And that then is better for your uh, green credentials yeah. because you're not right. then wasting so much power in the conversion. And that's where a flyback, uh, a flyback converter is more efficient than the forward converter. Right. So, we've, so, we've, so we've, we've gone back to a flyback converter, gets us the low end efficiency. We've done clever stuff to mitigate the, <laughs> to mitigate the nominal inefficiency of the flyback converter at high, uh, at high load. Yes. Uh, and then you get nice high efficiency all the way, all the way across the yes. range. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's good news. Excellent. Yeah, I hope so. Yes. I'm looking forward to having a play with it. So am I. <laughs>